When you think about the last few months, what word comes to mind? Pandemic? Closed? Change? Since the start of the pandemic, our world has been flipped upside down, closing stores, shutting down schools, and changing the way we interact. But as many of us try to navigate the new normal, we've also seen signs of hope. Whether they're physical signs or a simple gesture, you have chosen to make it an opportunity to generate creativity and togetherness. So tonight we want you to set aside that word you initially thought of and instead replace it with this one, Inland Together. Hi everyone and thank you for joining us for Inland Together right here on Creme 2. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Tonight we want to showcase our community and highlight the moments that made us smile and laugh and really appreciate one another. The whole Creme 2 team is working to showcase the good news stories that you have shared with us. We start off tonight with a story of survival. For 20 days, Ryan Ragasa Barasa was on a ventilator at Sacred Heart battling the coronavirus. He nearly died, but the local man fought back and was finally able to leave the hospital. Ryan Ragaza Barasa left the hospital this week to a round of applause. Doctors and nurses lined the hallway at Sacred Heart to celebrate the 45-year-old's hard-fought victory against the virus spreading across the globe. I'm glad I'm sitting here talking to you today. It sounds like you've just been through kind of the ringer, man. Yeah, I'm definitely grateful to, to be here. Uh, it was a pretty traumatic, you know, ex experience. For Ryan, it began back in mid-March. He says at first he just felt tired, then developed a fever that lasted about three days. Then came an unrelenting cough that got so bad he couldn't sleep. And then I just started coughing uh, for about five days straight. I called my doctor. Um, he said, don't come in. Uh, we'll uh, give you a prescription for some uh, cough suppressant with some codeine. Mm -hmm. And so I used that for three days. It didn't work, it didn't help, and uh, that's why the following Friday I went to urgent care uh, mm -hmm. to kind of get that cough, you know, cleared up and figured out. Um, and then they sent me to the ER, and uh, that was the beginning of the ordeal. Within 24 hours of arriving at the ER, Ryan says he was in a medically induced coma on a ventilator. He recalls talking to his family one last time before heading to the ICU. That was probably the scariest part of that, that I may never see them again, and only having that short period of time to talk to him before I went on the ventilator. Were you diagnosed with COVID-19 before you went on the ventilator? No, I got tested um, when it got to the ER, but it took four days before my test came back positive. Did they ever tell you how close you were to not surviving? You know, I think, I think the word miracle pretty much summed it up. 1%, 2% chance. Um, they would never give me a percentage, maybe just for my mental stability, but um, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't looking good. Little by little, Ryan says he started to improve, but no part of the fight was easy. The only contact he had with his family was via phone call or FaceTime, and he describes his time on the ventilator as especially tough. There are times I wanted to give up. I mean, I just, the breathing, uh, the ventilator, but then I think just thinking about um, my family just gave me that extra strength to to just keep on battling. There were times where I, I thought I couldn't do it. So um, somehow, some way, I made it through. All said and done, Ryan was in the hospital for about a month. He sent us this video of his neighbors lining a street, holding signs and cheering as he returned home to his wife and sons. That was definitely a big moment that uh, I got to see them again because truthfully, I. Wasn't expecting to to be around. Is there like a message maybe that you might have for, for the Spokane community about the coronavirus given what you went through? It doesn't discriminate on who's gonna gonna catch it. So I think it's just if you can be precautious, you know, I think um it's uh, for the best. I recently spoke with Ryan to get an update on his recovery, and he told me a bit of a cough does linger still, but he's getting stronger every day and now doing physical therapy. He's just happy to be on the mend. In the meantime, several drivers with Spokane Transit Authority transporting more than just people now. They're also delivering meals. And Shayna, this is helping a ton of people. 
Yeah, Mark, since Governor Inslee's stay home order, drivers for the Spokane Transit Authority have been pretty light on their rides. So these drivers decided to put their downtime to good use by helping out Spokane's Meals on Wheels. Normally that's not something that we would do, but in times of emergency, we have the latitude to do that. About 30 drivers have been helping the organization with their deliveries. On any given day, there are about 12 drivers in their vans visiting seniors to drop off their meals. With the help of the STA drivers, they've distributed more than 5,000 meals every week. And this isn't the only way our community is coming together, right, Laura? That's right, Shana. It is so important right now to get food to people, not only for nourishment, but to show that we care and that we're thinking of them. And that was certainly the case recently at the Spokane Veterans Home. Of course, the home has been hit very hard by the coronavirus and the caregivers there are exhausted and sad. And so we wanted to do something to show that we care. So we called our friends at STCU and said, would you be willing to possibly bring some meals for the workers at the Spokane Veterans Home. And they did, and they did it in a big way. They not only supported the caregivers, but they also supported a local business. They provided lunch and dinner for nearly 100 of the workers at the Spokane Veterans Home and bought the meals from a downtown restaurant. What a way to show that we care. And so we say thank you to all the businesses that are stepping up. There are two local artists that we want to feature that are using their skills and talents to make our world a more beautiful place. Here's Amanda. Laura, to some, this might be just a pine cone or just a rock, but to these artists, even a simple leaf or flower are pieces of art supplied by Mother Nature. Hi, I'm Sarah Edwards. And I'm Ava Barony, and we're the Botanical Alchemists. About a year ago, Sarah and Ava started creating large-scale floral designs in Spokane's parks. They use only the natural elements around them, along with flowers donated from local florists. At times, they receive about five buckets or hundreds of dollars worth of rescued flowers. Then they use them to create art for the public to enjoy. When people see our art, I think that people feel joy and feel, feel a sense of connection to the environment. You may have seen their last design at Polly Judd Park. It took the botanical alchemists about 10 hours over the course of two days to create both designs. So if you're looking for something to make you smile, let your eyes wander from the trail and follow the flower petal path. Amanda Rowley, I'll send things back to you. Started as kind of just this random joke. What started off as a joke is now a quarantine tradition. For a group of Zags fans, the time shared online has provided them an opportunity to get to know the players off the court. Stay with us, you're watching the Inland Together special.